And Jesus taught here and elsewhere, it is also tempered by a genuine love. The Pharisees had elevated hostility toward the wicked to the status of a virtue. In effect, they nullified the second great commandment to love your neighbors yourself. We don't have to do that because we figured out that most people are not our neighbors. Jesus answered that this lawyer demolished the pharisaical excuse for hating one's enemies. That was John MacArthur. Jesus tells this parable of the Good Samaritan and answers the lawyer's question of who is my neighbor? Notice in our text, verse 30, there's a problem, a serious situation. Verse 30, Jesus took up the question and said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him, they beat him up, and they fled, leaving him half dead. There's a serious problem here. Serious situation. Man's traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho, which is a rocky, winding, treacherous descent for 18 miles that provided an excellent terrain for bandits and robbers. And this traveler's robbed. He's wounded. He's left along the roadside to die. Completely helpless. Completely alone. Now, being the man's blessed day, who would happen by but a Jewish priest? What a blessed day for this man. A descendant of Aaron who would have had priestly responsibilities in the Jerusalem temple. Now, if ever there was someone this man could count on, would it not be a priest? He offered no help. Look at verse 31. A priest happened to be going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by the other side. He passed by the other side. So here, the man is lying down. He's broken. He's beaten. Almost to death. The priest sees him. You know, maybe he's walking along. Blah, 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 you know. Oh, goodness. Instead of going over to the man, he moves to the other side of the road. I'm going to get as far away. Uh, let's just kind of think. It doesn't tell us what this man was thinking. What this priest was thinking. Why he would walk to the other side. But he may have thought, well, this man's beat up. He's hurt. He's hurt him. Maybe those that hurt him are going to come back and they'll hurt me too. Now, maybe that was his thought. Or, I've got so much work to do in Jerusalem at the temple. I've got so much to do. I don't have time for this man. I don't have time for him. Now, he does look familiar. He may be someone who I've seen at the temple, but that's okay. I don't have time for him. He moves on. He offered no help. And I believe that this Jewish priest represents the religious world, the religious leaders, the Pharisees, the experts in the law, those that are leading the church. Do we see people hurting and then just pass by, step over to the side, say, no, I don't, I don't want help. And they may not just be hurting in this manner. I haven't seen too many people in Bingham, and I haven't yet to see anyone lying on the street, bleeding, beat up and hurt back then. I haven't seen that yet. I've seen it in Greenville. I have seen it there. I haven't seen it here. But people are hurting. What about the woman who has no husband? The husband's left to her, died. She's got a child. She didn't know how she's going to keep the water on so she can bathe herself or bathe her child. What about those who, who uh, have to go to the hospital all the time and be up there and, and, and they can't seem to take care of their families? There's just so much to do. What are we? If we step to the other side, try to move just walk on by, maybe someone else will take care of it. Okay, the priest. He's deserted this man in his darkest hour, but alas, along comes a man who would not have been a descendant of Aaron. And therefore he was not a priest. But he was a member of the tribe of Levi and he would have assisted the priest. He would have been an assistant to the priest. A, a layman of sorts. Now, what will he do? Notice verse 32. In the same way, a Levite, when he arrived at the place and saw him, he passed by the other side. And it seems that this assistant to the priest has learned well. He did the same thing as the priest. Maybe they had classes there at the temple. You see someone hurting, you, you need to move like this. Just, just take one step over. Step out of the way. Maybe he had learned well. Now this Levi could represent the hypocritical church world. A phony religious world. Basically, playing church. We talk about that a lot here. Playing church. We don't want to be playing church. We want to be about 
the things of God. I had a man come up to me the other day. I was at a store. He came up. He said, I hear that y'all are an active church. An active church. And, and he used a word that uh, kind of caught me off a little bit, caught me off guard a little bit. It's, uh, in the religious world, it's not necessarily a good term, progressive. He said, I hear that y'all are a progressive church. But he explained what he meant by that. He was speaking in business terms. You're a church that goes out, wants to be a part of the community, wants to help. I thought that was a wonderful thing to be said. Praise the Lord for that. But it's never, ever, ever enough. We can't rest on that. Oh, well, somebody said something. Oh, great. Well, let's just lay back and take it easy. No, we've got to be about reaching those in this community. Reaching them. Not a phony religious group who hang around and have a little show together. Maybe we can all get in the water and baptize each other. Maybe we can take to the communion table and have a good time. A little phony religious life. It's not what we're to be about. Would be about the things that Christ was about and see what he's teaching here. Now, someone else happens along here. An enemy of the Jews, a Samaritan. Culturally, it would have been unthinkable for a Samaritan to help a Jew and vice versa. They hated one another terribly. What had happened, these Samaritans, this, this Samaritan would have been an offspring of where the Jews had intermingled or intermarried with Gentiles. And so they were not just hated by the Jews, they were also hated by the Gentiles. By both. So kind of the Samaritans were just a group by themselves that were just hated by everyone. But notice verses 33 through 35. But a Samaritan on his journey came up to him and when he saw this Jew, this man, he had compassion. He went over to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And then he put him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of them. When I come back, I'll reimburse you for whatever extra you spent. I will reimburse you. This Samaritan helped this desperate Jew. This despised Samaritan had pity on this Jewish man who had been left to die by his religious leaders. All the religious leaders had walked by and left him. His own people had left him there, the Jews. And the Samaritan happens by. And he shows, he displays godly love. First of all, godly love. The Samaritan had compassion for this Jew. He had compassion. That's godly love. The Bible teaches over and over and over that God is compassionate. He is gracious. He is slow to anger. He is kind. And this Jew, or this Samaritan, showed that kindness, that compassion that God shows to every, every individual. This Samaritan showed to this Jew this hurting Jew. The Samaritan displayed tangible love. Secondly, tangible love. I love that word tangible. What does it mean? He bandaged up his wounds. He didn't walk over to this Jewish man and get down and put his hand on him and say, God, please help him. I hope everything's okay. All right, nice. Let's get out of here. No. Tangible love. He got down and bandaged. He took all, put it on there to make sure that infection didn't set in. He used oil and wine. Wine for the infection. Make sure no infection set in. So tangible. Bandaged up his wounds. He showed gentle and kind love. He took the man to an inn and took care of him, it says. He took him to an inn. He put him on his own animal, his donkey, and took him all in to this inn. Took care of him. And then the Samaritan also showed, fourthly, selfless love. He paid for the man's care. Paid two days' wages. Took two days' wages, paid it there, and said, if there's anything else owed, I'll pay it when I come back. It doesn't matter if I have to miss a meal in the cook. I'll take my money and use it to help this man. I have to give up a dinner. I have to give up something this week. He should have selfless.